so class please reconnect please reconnect all is good we are back we are back so I will wait till we have sorry sudden glitch hello hello we are back we are back Keep coming, keep coming, keep joining us, keep joining us. Sorry for that, sorry for that. I have no idea what happened. Some some network glitch. Time management, time management is the thing, time management. Wake up in the morning at 5, do one hour exercise before the sun uh, rises up. For one hour, either go for running, do cycling, do weight training, go for swimming. Oh, swimming is not possible though. Uh, go for one hour strong exercise. Then suddenly, calm down, take a bath. Uh, do some meditation if you can for 15 minutes or 30 minutes then after your meditation your daily prayer things in the morning make your plan write down everything in your diary neat or any other things you are looking for uh, or there then you can you can make make plans for you it's all about time management it's all about time management Everyone can clear NEET exam. It's no problem. It's no problem at all. So PCR could have a lot of errors. Yes, yes. It can have a lot of errors. Uh, so let's say uh, when we are doing experiments and we want to see some good amount of DNA but due to wrong primers we have ordered or due to the DNA polymerase is not working because it has been heat inactivated uh, then your reaction will be not work as it should be then you will, will not see the bands that you want to look for in the electrophoresis gel you might some different bands then yeah I think I have a protocol for you also guys if I rem yeah there is a protocol for you PCR method so I will share this with you in this only so we're done with the PCR so we had a, a nice virtual lab and some okay I cannot copy like that so I have to attach it actually PCR method okay so I post it in this also PCR method okay so shall we continue how many students we have now 135 oh please join join there were around more than 200 students last time so guys uh, let let just wait for one minute more then we will start Okay, I will start now.
so we were talking about real time pcr so we have our tac1 master sec, uh, master mix with 25 microliter of sample 2x then we have forward reaction mixture then we had reverse reaction mixture of 5 microliter then we prepare the reaction mixture with Takman props with 5 microliter per sample so this is all uh, protocol this is you have to just do as it is said to us so we allocate into the 96 well plate like this manually then we add cdna sample 10 microliter with that reaction mixture of it complementary DNA then we cover it with the micro seal film like this then cover the plate fully then you put in the real time PCR machine and run the program that's it that's how simple it is no voodoo signs so I was showing you that formula so you select your chambers your samples are and you arrange the temperature and you analyze the results so you see that that uh, some some bars will be coming like this like this one your each samples results are coming like that in this way and hence you have a report at the end this is your report and you can create a graph out of it so thank you very much so you can analyze the data later cool so that's how you, you check it. So I will continue uh, with the next. So guys, this is uh, uh, this this video is tell you about how this RTPC technique that we have discussed uh, with with all the fluorescence and and yeah the how we how we did it and we discovered the principle behind it now it's application so during this COVID-19 when you see uh, that somebody is COVID positive and how they check that the person is COVID positive it's it's via RT-PCR technique and I will explain now in this via this video how this uh, RT-PCR uh, could be helpful to check the COVID patients yeah I will start the video so one thing is when the video is going on i cannot speak because my my voice start to echo so only uh, when the video is playing only video will be played then okay fine i will start coronavirus 2 when a person is infected the most common symptoms include fever covid-19 is an infectious disease caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 when a person is infected, the most common symptoms include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. To start a test, the samples can be collected by a nasopharyngeal swab or an oropharyngeal swab. For nasopharyngeal specimen, 
The swab is inserted in the nostril and gently moved forward into the nasopharynx. Then it is rotated for a specified period time to collect secretions that contain the virus. Once the swabbing is applied, the swab is placed immediately into sterile tube containing a viral transport medium. The standard method of coronavirus testing is polymerous chain reaction, PCR, which is a method that used widely in molecular biology to make millions to billions of copies of a specific DNA fragment rapidly. Coronaviruses contain an extraordinarily long single-stranded RNA genome. To detect these viruses with PCR, RNA molecules must be converted into their complementary DNA sequences by reverse transcriptase. Then the newly synthesized DNA can be amplified by standard PCR procedures. This approach is universally known as RT-PCR. To perform this method, basically viral RNA should be extracted. Several RNA purification kits are available for convenient, fast and effective isolation. To extract the viral RNA by using commercial kit, the sample is first added into a microcentrifuge tube. Then it is mixed with a lysis buffer. This buffer is highly denaturing and is usually consists of phenol and guanidine isothiocyanate. Also, RNase inhibitors are usually present in the lysis buffer to ensure isolation of intact viral RNA. Once the lysis buffer is added, the tube is mixed by pulse vortexing and incubated at room temperature. Then the virus is lysed under the highly denaturing conditions provided by the lysis buffer. Once the sample is lysed, a purification procedure is carried out by using a spin column. The sample is loaded onto the spin column. Then a centrifugation is performed. This procedure is a solid phase extraction method, in which the stationary phase consists of a silica matrix. Under optimal salt and pH conditions, RNA molecules are bind to the silica gel membrane, and at the same time, protein and other contaminants are not retained. After centrifugation the spin column is placed into a clean collection tube, and the filtrate is discarded. Then a wash buffer is added. The column is put in a centrifuge again, forcing the wash buffer through the membrane. This removes any remaining impurities from the membrane, leaving only the RNA bound to the silica gel. Once the sample is washed, the column is placed in a clean microcentrifuge tube, and an elution buffer is added. Then, a centrifugation is carried out, forcing the elution buffer through the membrane. The elution buffer removes the viral RNA from the spin column. And a purified RNA, which is free of protein, inhibitors, and other contaminants is obtained. After the extraction of the viral RNA, the next step is the preparation of the reaction mixture for PCR amplification. In this step, a master mix is used which is a premixed concentrated solution that consists of buffer, reverse transcriptase enzyme, nucleotides, forward primer, reverse primer, Tachman probe, and DNA polymerase. Finally, to complete this reaction mixture, the RNA template is added. The tube is mixed by pulse vortexing. Then the reaction mixture is loaded into a PCR plate which generally contains 96 wells, allowing the analysis of several samples at the same time. Next, the plate is placed in a PCR machine, which is essentially a thermal cycler. Real-time RT-PCR is used for the detection of the new coronavirus 2019 by the amplification of target sequences in the RDRP gene, the E gene, and the N gene. The choice of the target gene depends on the primers and the probe sequences. The first step in RT-PCR is reverse transcription. The first strand complementary DNA synthesis is primed with the PCR reverse primer, which hybridizes to a complementary part of the virus RNA genome. Reverse transcriptase then adds DNA nucleotides onto the three prime end of the primer, synthesizing DNA complementary of the viral RNA. The temperature and duration of this step depend on the primer, the target RNA, and the reverse transcriptase used. Next, an initial denaturation step is applied, causing denaturation of the RNA-DNA hybrids. This step is required for the activation of DNA polymerase and simultaneously the inactivation of reverse transcriptase. 
PCR consists of a series of thermal cycles, with each cycle consisting of denaturation, annealing, and extension steps. Denaturation step consists of heating the reaction chamber to 95 degrees Celsius, and it is used for denaturation of the double-stranded DNA template. In the next step, the reaction temperature is lowered to 58 degrees Celsius, allowing annealing of the forward primer to its complementary part of the single-stranded DNA template. The annealing temperature relies directly on length and composition of the primers. In the extension step, the DNA polymerase synthesizes a new DNA strand complementary to the DNA template strand by adding free nucleotides from the reaction mixture that are complementary to the template in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The temperature at this step depends on the DNA polymerase used. After the first cycle, the double-stranded DNA target is obtained. Then, the denaturation of this double-stranded DNA is performed, yielding two single-stranded DNA molecules. In the next step, the reaction temperature is lowered, allowing annealing of the primers to each of the single-stranded DNA templates, and annealing of the Tachman probe to its complementary part of the target DNA. Tachman probe consists of a fluorophor covalently attached to the 5' prime end of the oligonucleotide probe. The fluorescence is emitted by the fluorophor when it is excited by the cycler's light source. Also, this probe consists of a quencher at the 3' prime end. The close proximity of the reporter to the quencher prevents detection of its fluorescence. In the extension step, DNA polymerase synthesizes new strands. When the polymerase reaches a Tachman probe, its endogenous 5' prime nuclease activity cleaves the probe, separating the dye from the quencher. With each cycle of PCR, more dye molecules are released, resulting in an increase in fluorescence intensity, proportional to the amount of amplicant synthesized. This method allows the estimation of the amount of a given sequence present in a sample. The number of double-stranded DNA pieces is doubled in each cycle, therefore, PCR can be used to analyze extremely small amounts of sample. For the measurement of the fluorescence signal, a tungsten halogen lamp, an excitation filter, mirrors, lens, an emission filter, and a charge-coupled device CCD camera are used. Filtered light from the lamp is reflected off-mirror passes through a condensing lens, and is focused into the center of each well. Then fluorescent light emitted from the wells reflects off the mirror, passes through an emission filter, and is detected by the CCD camera. In each PCR cycle, light from excited fluorophor can be detected by the CCD camera, which converts the light that it captures into digital data. This method is known as real-time PCR, which allows the monitoring of the progress of the PCR reaction as it occurs in real-time. Okay. Thanks to Balaji for animation making this great video. I highly appreciate them. Uh, so by this, uh, you can check how it is done. So understand how it is done, all the video, uh, mainly the quencher and the dye, that was the main principle of the RT-PCR here. So as the quencher is moved, the dye also start to give light to the uh, CCD camera and you can check it. So you will have these all videos also including in the presentation, the presentation size is quite big, around 110 MB. So be careful while download it, downloading it. So we are done with the uh, various techniques so far with the PCRs, uh, uh, joining of your uh, nucleotides, then RT-PCR and how it's, it is being checked for the COVID-19 patients. Now comes the third technique that is DNA microarrays. Anyone knows what is DNA microarrays are? Anyone knows about them? Please tell me. Tell me about DNA microarrays. Anything Ian, you know? Anyone about uh, what is DNA microarrays is all about? Have you done that before? So this is something new technique for you, I guess.
okay i will i will start with you so we will do a virtual workshop also about this uh there's a virtual workshop and we will also go through some uh presentation i think we also have one video yeah we have yeah we have so DNA microarrays, uh, they consist of thousands of individual genes uh, bound to closely spaced region on a surface of a glass microscope slides or synthesized uh, sequence on a chip surface. So what you can see is uh, on the right hand side uh, is a combination of uh, fibroblast without serum fibroblast with serum because fibroblast are the ones which uh, start to act differently if the in the medium serum is not added okay so they will the various genes that are expressed uh, with, with serum and without serum you will see some change in the genes so what we did is we uh, isolate the total rna okay red sounds good so we, we isolate the total mRNA from these two uh, cell culture. One is with the without serum, one is with the serum added. Okay. And then we re reverse transcribe, uh, transcribe them to cDNA, label filled with the fluorescent dye. Then we made a cDNA and we add a green dye and we added red dye. And then we mix them together. Then hybridized to DNA microarray. So we added them to the microarray slide. Then we wash that slide. Then we measure green and red fluorescence over each spot. So this is your microarray uh, tubes looks like. So where you will see spots. So this is how your green and red, uh, they are like uh, cDNA is hybridized to DNA for a single gene like this. And if, if you see the green spot, that means expression of gene has been decreased in the cells after serum addition. If you see a green dot, that means the expression of that gene, particular that gene has been decreased after the serum addition. Whereas a red dot means expression of that gene is increased in after the serum addition. So that's how you can say about also many diseases uh, like what happened in the cancerous cells and healthy cells. Uh, you can check whether the, that gene is highly expressed or not, not expressing it or either they are both expressing in the both species. You can check it with the help of DNA microarray technique actually. So this is how a DNA microarray uh, looks like. Uh, this, you can see some yellow spots, some red spots and green spots. So mainly we have three different spots, red, yellow and green and the yellow spots becomes after the red and yellow when they get mixture, like when whenever the red and yellow get mixture, we get a yellow spot in it. So each, each spot here contains many DNA uh, copies of unlabeled DNA corresponding to one specific mRNA and the label cDNA hybrid to spots, there is a sequence of match, uh, red plus green is yellow and red one is the one. Uh, the other one with the sample with the red dye, uh, green one other sample with the uh, green dye, green dye, yes. So you can, after the results, you can do microarray data, can see co-express genes, we can do bioinformatic analysis, it is in silico, which could analyze different functions of our gene, uh, map to the common pathway. So we can check various glycolysis, cell cycle cycles with that. So to explain this uh, difficult method, one more video for you. This animation will demonstrate how DNA microarray experiments are performed. DNA microarrays, sometimes called DNA chips, reveal the expression of thousands of genes on a solid surface, such as a microscope slide. In this example, we'll use yeast as a model system to illustrate one use of microarrays. One common use of microarrays is to determine which genes are activated and which are repressed when two populations of cells are compared. Every gene is measured simultaneously. As an example, we'll compare what happens to yeast genes when cells are grown in aerobic versus anaerobic conditions. The cells grow and adjust which genes need to be activated or repressed in order to survive. Now it is time to isolate the mRNA from both populations of cells. The cells are spun in a centrifuge. Now that the cells have gathered in pellets, we remove the liquid, but not the cells. 
Next, it is time to extract the mRNA from the cells. When we add the extraction buffer, the mRNA is released into the solution. Next, we remove the RNA and place it in a fresh tube. Now, let's make the cDNA from the mRNA. Here we see three of the many mRNA molecules from each tube of cells. Each mRNA is converted into red or green colored cDNA. When the colored cDNA is made, the mRNA degrades. Then we combine the red and green cDNA, mixing both colors into a single tube. At last, it's time to look at the DNA microarray. In our experiment, a microarray or DNA chip contains about 6,000 spots. Each spot is a different yeast coding sequence from a different gene. Let's choose three spots at random to follow in detail. Each spot is made of DNA that can base pair with its complementary cDNA. Here are partial sequences from each of the three spots we are observing. Now, let's incubate the mixed cDNA with the DNA chip. For the sake of our example, we'll zoom in and show that some of the labeled cDNA have bound to the DNA in the spots and formed base pairings. Here we see green and red cDNA bound to this spot. Only red cDNA is bound to this spot. And only green cDNA bound to this other spot. In a real experiment, you would not see any of this detail. You would only see the original microarray. Now we must wash off the unbound cDNA to see what is bound to the microarray. Let's detect the bound cDNA so it can be visualized. We begin by placing the microscope slide containing the microarray inside a scanner. We'll examine the next phase of the process, keeping our focus on the three spots we've been following. First, a green laser scans the microarray. The resulting image is stored on a computer for later analysis. Now it's time for the red laser. This image is also stored on a computer for later analysis. Now, we move to the analysis phase. After we eject and safely store the microscope slide, we retrieve the red and green images from the computer and create a merged visualization. In the merged image, we see an aerobic gene labeled in green, an anaerobic gene labeled in red, and a gene labeled in yellow that was expressed in both aerobic and anaerobic conditions. This is one example of how DNA microarrays are used. In an actual experiment, quantitative analysis would be conducted on all 6,000 genes. So I hope uh, things are clear now, much better than before. Oops. This one. So you understand what I what we meant there. So it's a mixture. Yellow spots is a mixture of both genes actually. They are the mixture of both genes. So to see to see this furthermore. I, I want to take you to the uh, one workshop here, DNA microarray in the virtual lab, where we will check between the healthy cell and cancerous cells, how the results looks like. Yeah, so this is, so let's begin with the microarray here. So I will not go with a uh, lot of uh, basics. We have understood the basics. Basically, we just go with the measuring the genes. Let's say uh, measuring the gene expression to see how much is your expressed uh, in your genes are. So let's continue. So this is your muscle cells, which has nucleus, uh, has strands of DNA, and then it has its different genes: gene one, two, three, four, uh, and some are on, some are off. Okay. So out of these genes, uh, mRNAs are made and they could be expressed further for making proteins like actin and myosin. 
like if actin and myosin are are on then they will produce mrna and the proteins like actin and myosin are produced so in pancreatic cells but so in the muscle cells there is no insulin production melanin production is happening because these genes are off in them but other genes are on but in the case of a uh, liver uh, liver isolate cells we have uh, actin is on uh, myosin is off but insulin is on there because insulin is production is done in the liver cells so that's how your gene uh, are expressed differently uh, there is where uh, now the dna microarrays play a role in it to check uh, various genes like which genes are present in which one to check them so this is some introduction you can check that later i will forward this part and we come to the experiment part straight forwardly so uh let's check so this uh portion has lot of uh, dnas in each spot one gene is present in each spot in that case so as we said last time there are around 6000 6, spots are present in the in the, in the plate itself so we going to check uh, the question is what is the difference between a healthy cell and the cancerous cells so we will look for that in our question with the help of dna microarray so within the uh, microscope when we check between the healthy cells and the cancerous cells cancerous cells are huge in numbers they keep growing because of deletion of some gene or some mutation in the gene uh, happening and the uh, meiosis is happening at very large scale so let's say the gene 3 is mutated in the cancerous cells and then which will lead to the overproduction of the cells mass production and hence cancer so due to gene 3 is abnormal uh, we can see this large production of cells and we have a cancer formation happening so the experiment first we collect the tissue then we isolate rna from that then we isolate mrna then we make label DNA copy out of that. Then we apply DNA to the uh, microarray tube. Then we scan the microarray. Uh, then we analyze the data. So these are seven steps to it. So we need some more equipments now. Some Appendorfs, some scalpel, solvent solution, pipettes, vortex genie, microcentrifuge columns, buffer solution, green and red labeling mix, microarray, uh, washing solution, microarray sc uh, scanner and computer. So we need to check all these, these, uh, these parts while doing this experiment. Uh, now we begin to answer our question, what is the difference between healthy and a cancer cell? We will answer this question by looking at the gene expression which genes are on and off in cancer cell as compared to the healthy cells and we will do this by measuring the types of mrna found in both type of cells so we will check mrna genes like which genes is present or not so first we need some cells to do start the experiment so this is a cancerous tissue somebody has a melanoma a kind of a skin cancer and from here we will extract the uh, our sample from it so our patient has arrived let's collect the sample we go take the scalp and cut the sample and put it in there this is cancerous cell and this is normal cells then we need to extract RNA from both tissues by dissolving in organic solvents we can separate the DNA protein and other cell components leaving the RNA in a solution so we will add this solvent to healthy and cancer cell so let's do this and then into the cancerous tissue we mix them with the vortex genie so 
first healthy cells so that everything get mixed then the cancerous cells then we microcentrifuge these samples close the lid and let's start so this is on the top will be RNA at the bottom you will have protein DNA and other stuff but we required only RNA so we will remove this part out of it so we took this micro pipeter added to that yeah then also this one add into that then sample contains messenger RNA, tRNA and ribosomal RNA our task is to take uh, mainly the mRNA and then remove rest of the transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA we don't need these ones so to do so what we do now is so this mRNA molecule it has a poly A tail so you can see uh, which is a sequence of adenine there so on the mRNA reflects gene expression so we will save the mRNA and get rid of the others so to do so we have these column 1 and column 2 so in the close up of beads we can see a poly T attached to B poly T is attached to these beads so that is uh, thymine is attached so here uh, your adenine will attach to it and we can remove the mRNA out of it so we took it we took the healthy cells and put into the column 1 so all the waste will go down with the tRNA and ribosomal RNA and our mRNA will be remain left in the columns the same way we will do with the column 2 with the cancerous cells all the waste of tRNA and RNA will be removed and only mRNA will be left So this is a close-up of beads you can see with mRNA uh, where your mRNA is attached with this uh, poly uh, T tails and A tails. So they, they got attached and you have mRNA left there. So we remove the, the mRNA by adding a buffer solution to this on both we added some buffer solution and we have our mRNA at the bottom of our appendorf now we label these DNAs with green fluorescent and red fluorescent dye so healthy cells will be with the green fluorescent So we have reverse transcriptase, poly uh, T primer and labeled nucleotides. So all these three together will make the reaction run. Like this we have all our green nu nucleotides attached to it and we have our labeled complementary DNA. We have our labeled complementary DNA now. So that's the task of creating a complementary DNA and we do the same thing with our cancer cells with the red label dye. So now it's time uh, to put this uh, these samples onto our microarray tube. So as you know these DNA strands could uh, be separated and then they could be joined by other strands and this is called as hybridization so this is how your DNA microarray works based on the principle of hybridization so these are different DNA sequences these are same DNA within each we have same DNA sequences and between each spots is different DNA sequences are there 
so each spot is corresponding to some gene name uh, in the DNA microarray our slide so it's time to see the final results I'm quite excited now I'm quite excited so let's add let's add this one first now let's this one You see what what is happening here we remove the unhybridized label dna to be outside whatever the unhybridized one version was there it has been removed okay and then we have a uh, red uh, cancerous cells uh, with the cdna hybridized on the spots and green ones are the healthy ones uh, hybridized to the spot and the yellow ones are both uh, green and red uh, which are making a yellow color here Now we will wash off the extra cDNA that didn't bind to the slide and place the microarray into the washing solution. Now we will scan this microarray. Into the scanner. Let's uh, screen green first so these are the all green spots that are healthy cells that are uh, transcribed for gene and we know these gene numbers which gene does they cross corresponds to so dark greens are the genes that were not uh, the dark spots are the one which are not transcribed in the healthy cells remember not every gene expressed in every cell type so all genes are not expressed so some genes which are dark spots, they are the one which are not expressed. So now let's scan the red one. Here we see it's clear the skin color cells have healthy skin cells. Also have uh, the, the red ones are the cancer cells and they are quite a lot uh, in the cancer cell samples. So let's merge these images together. So you can see we see a lot of yellow pictures now suddenly so that means uh, here we can see red and green spots merged together any spots that contain both and red and green complementary DNA shows up as a yellow and that yellow spot contains a genes that hybridize to both green and red cDNA which means that G genes are expressed both in carrier cells and healthy cells. So genes that show up as yellow spots probably aren't very interesting to us since their activity doesn't change when the cell becomes cancerous. But look at all the red spots and all the green spots. Clear? So red spots show genes that produce more mRNA uh, in the cancer cells than in the healthy cells. So they, they turned up in the cancer cells. So these are the ones that are turned up in the cancer cells, the red ones. Green ones, spot shows that uh, uh, whose expression is turned down in the cancer cells. They are the genes which are not uh, expressed in the cancer cells. So you are a researcher and you are interested in studying the genes that have increased level of activity in the skin cancer cells. What color spot you should choose to study? So you have to tell me, will it be black, dark one, yellow one, green one and red one. If you want to look for skin cancer cells, if you are looking for the skin cancer cells, which spot would you choose to study? Tell me students. Which spots will you choose? Will it be green, yellow, red? Yes, red. We choose red, red color here. Yeah. So red spots represents genes that are turned up in the cancer cells. 
so like gene 4, 2, 6, 3, uh, we can also call their names. So gene 4, 2, 6, 3 is the one genes that has been turned up in the cancer cells and produce protein products which has a role uh, in turn down the expression of several other gene expressions. So what are the other spots that are turned down by gene 4, 2, 6, 3? So it will be green one. So if the red gene is expressed, its expression has been uh, not being expressed, they, the spots will be the green ones. So that's how you find out. And last and not the least, uh, gene 6219 is normally turned on skin cells. In our cancer cells, the gene is defective. While the gene is still produce mRNA, the defective prevents it from being translated into protein. What color is, is in our micro uh, array? So it's showing the both effects. So it will be yellow. Yeah. So this is the final thing that what we have seen that gene 621 is present, is on in the in the healthy cells, and it seems uh, it's not being it's still present in the cancerous cells, but not producing mRNA, and hence it's not producing proteins. But in the healthy cells, they are producing the proteins in that case. So I think uh, that's it. Uh, so that's why scientists rely on these techniques, uh, whether the person is to see the diagnosis, if somebody has a, a bone marrow metastasis or any cancer cells, uh, they has to be started in their life. So they can, uh, they can, uh, yeah, check, check with the help of this, with this technique. So that's it uh, for today, I guess, Dean Microarray. Uh, shall we continue further? I think we have 10 minutes or we go for some other question sessions here. Okay, I... So we're done with DNA Microarrays. Uh, now, it's come for the investigating the genes with the, for the biotechnology approaches, how they're important and what we can do from them. So a little bit about them, about GMOs and some transgenic organisms and also to gene uh, something related with the oncogenes, drug treatment. So we will discuss a little bit about that here. So uh, first is applied uh, therapeutic uh, cloning. So this produce big amount of identical copies of interest, gain of functions analysis, like we can gain one function that we are looking for, for a particular gene. Then expression of genes in other organisms, like transgenic organisms, we can have, you know, ears uh, growing on the mouse uh, uh, back. So these are transgenic organisms we can work with. So why we do this? To obtain large amount of protein, we can work for like insulin uh, drug. Uh, we can increase its amount in bacteria or yeast from a human gene. Yeah, we can add that to the bacteria and increase the production of with the, with the plasmid vector. And with the cloning, we can increase the insulin production uh, via, via, uh, higher, in a higher amount. So to invest, investigate the function of protein uh, coded by genes in cell culture model or animal model, we can also do with this, this method. So generation of functional DNA molecules to for gene therapy in gene-related diseases. This is also possible in this case. Then, uh, last not the least, GMOs, genetically modified organisms. Uh, they are the organisms where genes has been deleted, either knocked out or added, that is transgenic or change, mutant. So three things could be possible. That is knockout. Either we can knock out one gene. Okay. Uh, or we can add a transgenic, add one gene that's, that will be transgenic organism or we can change the gene that will be called as mutant transgene. Okay, so gen generating improved agriculture crops with resistance against vermin or having increased content of healthy protein. That is possible with this technique. Yeah, generating transgenic animals. Uh, mainly mice has been done in this research extremely important for understanding the diseases and possible treatments like let's say if somebody uh, knock out one gene from the heart from the cardiomyocytes and 
and they see that person's heart failure chances or getting a heart attack is decreased by 40 percent by creating a deleting a gene so you can do a lot of things in the in the mice uh, and then you check the echocardiography of the mice to check the heart how it is how, for how long does the heart uh, the the mice lived for you can check all with this method yeah so in farming generation of healthy animals with improved production potentials uh, we can we can we can manage with this so i think uh, i will not continue more because uh, if i start the plasmid vectors it will be hard for us to finish this topic today and it will be a bit yeah this is many slides for dna so no this is no no so it will take me some time so we we do this tomorrow and we continue from here with our because uh, as per your schedule i have wrote to you check this so today was the day we have to deal with uh, molecular biology techniques in these techniques your recombinant technologies are also being added actually so we continue them tomorrow with the uh, with, with 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 clonings and more techniques also added to that then yeah so that's it for today uh, i think you enjoyed today's lecture with lot of videos some practical aspect and uh, it's some um, you learn something new and thank you for your patience for so being nice and I will take some questions now uh, so any questions regarding your um, about projects reviews or anything you can ask my ask me now So yeah, that's what I thought actually. It was a uh, an idea with Watsal sir and Edu Fabrica that that why not we bring uh, molecular biology techniques to students uh, by creating uh, at the virtual platform, which is during lockdown is not possible uh, to having a lab. So that's why I created some specific videos, some specific techniques easy to understand not so difficult for you because for some it might be difficult so i was today thinking to teach you some hydrogen exchange uh, uh, hydrogen exchange mass spectrometry how how many of you know about mass spectrometry tell me so you will get okay i will i will attach it now uh, today's presentation that's quite big one 111 MB it will take some time to be attached but you will get it today so I will share these these links also 